Quiz 9 will cover chapter 14, and the title of that chapter is Oligopoly. Now, for this video, I want to take all of the economics out of it. All I want to do is focus on a topic that the author frequently references, and that is the concept of game theory, particularly the prisoner's dilemma, which is a type of game. Now, game theory is a model of strategic behavior among individuals, each of which is seeking his own self-interest. The model analyzes the strategy that each individual, or player, if you will, uh, uh, adopts when deciding whether to cooperate or compete with the other player or players. Now, it can be a, a fascinating uh, method of analysis, uh, particularly when applied to economics. In fact, uh, the economics departments at most major universities have a course either offered at the junior or senior level in game theory. Uh, as you might imagine, game theory uh, can become highly mathematical, particularly when there are a lot of players, but uh, the, a, a two-person game can uh, be analyzed without any math, as you'll see in just a moment. Now, a Prisoner's Dilemma is a specific type of game. It's characterized by an equilibrium where both players will compete despite the incentive to cooperate, and the result will be the worst possible outcome for the, both players. Uh, it's called a Prisoner's Dilemma because when it was first demonstrated, it uh, had two players being prisoners and each prisoner having to decide whether to rat out the other guy or remain silent. Uh, the object, of course, was to minimize uh, his own prison sentence. But the equilibrium outcome, which is characteristic of the prisoner's dilemma, is that the worst thing happened to both. Both got the longest possible sentence. So let's talk about a prisoner's dilemma game. Now forget the prisoners because uh, I find that uh, difficult to explain. Possibly not difficult to understand, but I have a difficult time explaining it because it's way too involved. What I much prefer is to analyze a situation where two individuals, two men, let's say, are in a shipwreck and they both wash up on a uh, deserted island somewhere, much like uh, Tom Hanks did in, um, you know what, I can't even remember the name of the movie, where he had the friend that was a volleyball named Wilson. Okay, imagine that. Somebody post something to the discussion board. Tell me what that was. So two men wash up on this desert island, let's suppose, not, uh, rather deserted island, and neither one knows the other guy is there. Okay, now these two guys, are they are the players. Uh, the first thing they must do, these two players, is to acquire the necessary material wealth in the form of food, clothing, and shelter in order to survive or subsist. And they're able to do it by getting uh, whatever they find in the surf and whatever coconuts or edible grasses or vegetation they can find. Now, let us also suppose, just for convenience, that each player is able to produce for himself $100 of material wealth per period, maybe per day. Doesn't matter how we are able to figure out the price. Okay, 100 Okay, so let's analyze their situation using a prisoner, uh, sorry, using a game theory payoff matrix. We can use a payoff matrix instead of uh, equations. Here's what a payoff matrix will look like. There's a rectangle. And I'm going to divide this rectangle into four cells. That really looks bad, but okay, that's the best I can do. Now the two players will call Mr. A and Mr. B. 
How are we doing there? Mr. A and Mr. B. One day, Mr. A and Mr. B are both out looking for food or whatever, and they run into each other, say, oh, I didn't know anybody else was on the island. No, neither did I. Oh, this is great. Somebody on the island, you know, whatever. Then each goes back to his hut or his hole in the ground, whatever he lives in, and he has to decide, now, what am I going to do? Am I going to spend my time producing wealth for myself? Or am I going to steal some wealth from the other guy? So, there are two possible strategies that each can employ. Steal or not steal. So, let's put these strategies down. Steal or not steal. Mr. B has the same choices. To steal or not steal. Okay. Now, in each of these cells, I'm going to put a diagonal going from the northwest to the southeast corner. The values above the diagonal are going to belong to Mr. A. The values below the diagonals are going to belong to Mr. B. Now, let's look and see how much we'll get if each guy decides to not steal. Obviously, if they don't steal from each other, they will get their full 100. So, not steal, not steal. If they both decide not to steal from each other, Mr. A will get 100 and Mr. B will get 100. See that? Mr. A getting 100 and Mr. B getting 100. How are we doing? Okay. Now... Let's say that Mr. B decides to steal from Mr. A, but Mr. A does not steal from Mr. B. Furthermore, let's assume that Mr. B steals 50 from Mr. A. Mr. B steals 50 from Mr. A. So let's fill in our payoff matrix here with uh, what we know. Mr. B is going to steal, Mr. A is going to not steal, so it's this cell that will fill in. After Mr. B gets through fi stealing 50 from Mr. A, Mr. A will wind up, of course, with 50. That's what's left over, 50. Now we have to figure out how much Mr. B is getting. Our first impulse is to say that Mr. B is going to get 150 because he will get his 100 that he's able to produce plus the 50 from Mr. that he steals from Mr. A, but not so fast. Stealing is not a free activity. It's not that he has to pay any money to steal or anything like that, but he does have to make a sacrifice. There is a cost, an opportunity cost, if you will, because if he's off stealing from Mr. B, uh, Mr. A, He's not producing wealth for himself. So it is going to cost him something to steal from Mr. A. Let us suppose then that it cost him 20 to steal from Mr. A. The time it takes uh, means he's unable to produce $20 worth of wealth that he would otherwise have been able to produce. So therefore now, Mr. A B is going to get his 100 minus 20, which is 80, plus the 50 from Mr. A, so he's going to get 130. 130. Mr. B is going to steal, he gets 130. Mr. A, not steal, he gets 50. Now, let's go to the opposite end there, where Mr. A decides to steal, and Mr. B decides to not steal. It doesn't take a whole lot of explanation to see that this is going to be the exact opposite of this if we make the same assumptions about the cost of stealing. Mr. B is going to wind up with 50, and the stealing Mr. A is going to wind up with 130. Okay, we're almost done with our payoff matrix now. Let me make a new video starting right here.